John, to the seven churches in the province of Asia, said, Grace and peace to you from, who, from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits before him, his throne, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood and has made us to be a kingdom and priest to serve his God and Father, to him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And all peoples on earth will mourn because of him. So shall it be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. I, John, your brother and companion in the suffering and kingdom and patient endurance that are ours in Jesus, was on the island of Patmos because of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, we bow today in your presence. May your word be our rule, your spirit our teacher, and your greater glory our supreme concern, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ the King. There are two truths that I want to look at this morning. And I hope they'll be helpful, particularly for our baptism and confirmation candidates. The first truth is that suffering is real. And particularly for Christians, suffering is a reality. Stress and difficulties. That's kind of the bad news, but it's real. The second truth is that Jesus is king. And I want to look at those two things uh, from one part of one verse that we've just had read. And I'll read it to you in, in a little bit. I want to look at suffering first. And the Greek word is a wonderful Greek word. It's phlipsis, which is kind of, it's, it's descriptive, phlipsis. It's it really means pressure in Greek. And suffering is what comes when we feel under pressure from all sorts of different things. Suffering, we know, exists in the world around us. So let's start with the big picture. Let's start with what's happening in the Ukraine, in Sudan, in Gaza in many other places in the world. I'm sure you, many of you, know about persecuted Christians in the world. We're not far from Whitney, where Open Doors has its headquarters. And I don't know if any of you pray regularly for Open Doors, but in their prayer for this week, they tell us of a woman called Alice. Now, Alice is a Nigerian nurse who was working for UNESCO in the north of Nigeria. She had two other nurses who were Muslims, and she was a Christian. And they were working together, and they, all three of them were kidnapped by Muslim extremists in the north of Nigeria. They killed the two Muslims because they were working for UNESCO. But they kept Alice alive. For six and a half years, she was living with these terrorists, essentially, in their camp. She was married, married, to one of them, and she had a child. That husband died, and she was married again to another one. She already had a husband, but they didn't care about that. After six and a half years, she escaped with her child, and was picked up by the Nigerian army and taken back to her village, where she found her husband had married again. And so she was living with the shame of having another man's child forced on her, 
and suffering in, back in her community. So we think we're suffering. Pray for Alice and pray for others like her uh, in this world. But we know that there are millions of people who are suffering in all sorts of different ways. Shame, stigma, trauma, slipsis, pressures. And we've had the horror of uh, yet another scandal in the Church of England. And we've been urged to think and pray for those who are victims of that scandal. They suffered flipsis. The text I want to read is the last verse, half of the last verse that was read to us just now. It says this, I, John, your brother and partner in the flipsis and the kingdom and the patient endurance that are in Jesus. I want to look at, well, I've looked at suffering to a certain extent. It's not a bad summary of what the Christian life is like. It's not a bad summary, actually, of the book of Revelation. Your partner and brother in the tribulation, the kingdom, the patient endurance in Jesus. Jesus said, in the world you will have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Paul says a similar thing. We rejoice in our sufferings. We rejoice in our slipsis, knowing that slipsis produces endurance. So my first message really to our, our candidates and to all of us is that Christian life is not easy. What you've let yourself in for, what you've committed yourself to and are going to commit yourself from now on to is a life of resistance of the, the culture, resistance of the world, the flesh, and the devil. And that's not easy. It's never been easy, but I think it's particularly difficult these days. And it's difficult for young people. So the pressures on teenagers these days is such that we, certainly I, never uh, experienced. The Christian life is not easy. Take up your cross, Jesus said, daily, and stand against the pressures of the world, the flesh, and the devil. But back to that verse, John says, who's writing the book of Revelation, he says, I'm your brother and your partner. Those are two essential truths for what the Christian family, the Christian community, is all about. I'm your brother and your partner. Partner is... Uh, Another lovely Greek word, it's sun koinonos, uh, in communion, alongside, and with you. So as I look at all of you, you're all partners, sun koinonoi, in the kingdom of God, in the church of Jesus Christ. We have fellowship, and one of the essential things of uh, being baptized and being confirmed is being part of fully part of the fellowship and the family. So whatever we're suffering, we know we're not alone. Whatever difficulties we will go through, we know we're not alone. Confirmation is a great reminder that we have the support of this family, yes, but the family of God throughout the ages, the family of God uh, living and dead. We're not alone. We're part of a great communion of saints. That's who we are. And our communion is in the kingdom of God. Jesus is Lord and King. And that's my second or third point. Uh, suffering and kingdom. And the season before Advent in uh, the church's wisdom is the time when we think of from All Saints Tide, the beginning of November, through November, we look at what it's like to be in the kingdom of God kingdom season and we look particularly if you follow the readings of the church of england in morning prayer we have daniel for the old testament and revelation for the new testament it's a bit of a struggle if you go <laughs> if you go through those every day because it's this this difficult expression of visions but the point of it is to say in all this, in all the suffering, in all the problems of the world, Jesus is Lord. God wins in the end. 
Look at the eternal perspective. Jesus is king. And Jesus announced his first message to his uh, congregations and to his disciples was, the kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of God came with the king, who was Jesus. Bishop Tom Wright, uh, in one of his books, says this about Jesus as king. He says, Jesus is already ruling the whole world. This is one of the most important results of his resurrection. Some people are puzzled by this claim, but this claim is not that the world is already completely as Jesus intends it to be. It is that he is taking it from where it was, under the rule not only of death, but of corruption, greed, and every kind of wickedness, and he's bringing it by slow means and quick under the rule of his life-giving love. And how is he doing this? Here's the shock. Through us. Through us, his followers. The project only goes forward insofar as Jesus' agents, the people he has commissioned, are taking it forward. And so I say to our candidates, I say to all of you, we're part of Jesus' project to bring in the kingdom. Yes, he's ruling, but he needs us to be part of that ongoing advance of the kingdom of God. So the confirmation candidates are opting to be fully enrolled in this adventure. Suffering, partnership, kingship. So how do we get from suffering to kingship? And the Apostle John says... We get there by patient endurance. Through endurance, we will get to the kingdom. And it's another lovely Greek word. I do like Greek words. Uh, it's it's hupo mone. Now, mone is when Jesus says, abide in me and I, I in you, uh, as the vine abides in uh, the branches and so on. That's abiding, mone. Hopomone is abiding underneath. In other words, what, what this word is saying is hang on in there even if you're just hanging underneath. Patient endurance. And it comes up in all sorts of contexts in the Bible. By endurance, Jesus says, you will gain your lives. Hang on in there even if you're just hanging on by your fingernails. That's tough. Stick it out, but you can stick it out because you know Jesus is king. My last point is easy. Well, it's, uh, it's very important because all those things, the partnership, the suffering, the kingdom, and the faithful endurance, John says, they're all in Jesus. So we're not out here doing it all on our own. We have them in our relationship to Jesus. We are in Christ. We have Jesus in our lives. Jesus is with us. And all those things are part of what it means to be in Jesus. So the suffering, the thlipses is in Jesus. The kingdom is in Jesus. The endurance is in Jesus. And we're in fellowship with Alice and with millions of others throughout the world and throughout the ages. Welcome to the family. What's it like being a Christian? It's like being part of this kingdom, being part of the suffering, being part of the faithful endurance. So let's pray for our candidates, pray for ourselves, that we'll know more of God's help as we go in and through the Lord Jesus Christ to his final destination for us. Amen. I think we're going to sing now.